What's up, everyone? I realize that I haven't posted in a while, but I want to give straight off the bat you an update on this amp. It works. It sounds amazing. Um, I want to go over in this video some of the troubleshooting that I had to do during this, um, just to, as I'm comparing with my sort of main amp here, my uh, Steel String Singer number two, my first one, my point to point, using all like sort of metal film load resist uh, plate load resistors. Um, cathode resistors are all metal film. You know, basically, I went, quote, balls out on making sure that this is, like, sort of a modern uh, techniques. But the purest in me and then the purest out in the community was like, well, yeah. But I think there's a difference in tone with the plate load resistors if you go carbon film. Uh, just stick with how Dumble did it. Just once, see what you think. And I'm like, you know what? I will do that voice in my head. So luckily I have one of these. Uh, I first learned about this uh, from the Andertons video when they're comparing uh, two valve head, um, basically two tube amps using the same speaker cab. And I thought that was really cool. What it does is basically it routes your incoming signal. It cuts off the signal going to whatever amp is not active, so that way there's no sort of uh, signal going driving the uh, speaker output or the output transformer and the tubes and things like that, but it'll also load, you'll put a dummy load on that speaker cab um, or on that, um, that amp, that tube amp, um, while you switch back and forth. So it's, it's incredibly useful for listening and Basically, well, you could use this in a stage environment and change between, you know, a distorted head versus a clean head uh, using one speaker cab. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is comparing, I'm basically taking the output of that device, going into my boss way as a tube amp expander, and listening through my, and it's not plugged in, um, although it is wireless, Audio-Technica um, headset. So... If you know anything about these speakers or seen them on Amazon, these headphones, uh, they're very, very unforgiving. They quote studio grade for 130 bucks. Um, widely accepted as as a really great set of headphones uh, for listening in studio type of environments. It's not Beats by Dre as far as getting the bass drop and everything is very equal. The top end actually is kind of harsh. It takes a little bit to get used to, but you're going to hear all the note separation and um, the top end, how much top end there is, and you know all the nuances in the tone. You won't be able to feel it because you are obviously have your headphones on, but it's going to give me a good indication of the tone difference between these amps, if anything. All right, so I'm going to do a video specific on tone differences at a later date. But again, I want to kind of come back. Let's roll back to my initial sort of point of this video, which was, what did I learn by going with the circuit, uh, the PCB route? And what uh, a couple things I did learn, uh, A, that this circuit boards are confirmed, and I'm starting to sell them uh, only to the U.S., and Irwin is handling the um, European market, so we sort of did a divide of, of the uh, sort of landscape of do-it-yourself community. But more information coming on that in a blog and a very specific video. Um, so, the, yeah, A, the circuit board is complete and, and fine uh, as far as the original design. There's a few small revisions, and it's just really nitpicking. Like the silk screen um, just need to be changed. It's so simple, so minor. I'm using, because the uh, triad inductors are pretty much unobtainium again, Right now, they're sold out everywhere. This is a pretty much the same. Actually, Two Rock uses this exact inductor on their Classic Clean. Um, I haven't seen inside the new uh, Two Rock uh, Silver Signature Studio Signature. Uh, yeah, that one. Um, but I'm going to guess that they're using this. This is actually a Mesa Boogie uh, part that goes in their EQs. It's an inductor. Um, I'm using it. I honestly don't really hear any difference or influence of that inductor on the circuit. So a little sneak preview there. Um, <laughs> uh, so some other things. What did I learn? Oh, 
Okay, so I was switching back and forth, and if you watch any of my other videos or if you talk to me in person, I think this amp is the lowest noise floor. Sometimes I forget it's on, then all of a sudden I'll whack the guitar strings and then boom, um, I'm slapped in the face with tone. This amp was a little buzzy at first, It was, uh, and I couldn't figure out why. The transformers are Hammond, that's one minor difference, and these are classic tone. They're both, both paper wound. Um, so I, I didn't know what to what I was thinking, but then I listened to this um, power transformer and it was buzzing sort of at the same frequency as that buzz that was coming through my headphones or the speakers. So um, I started poking around and one of the most here's a pro tip: next time you get Chinese, take an extra set of chopsticks. Because when you're working around a live amp, you never use your hands because your hand is conductive. So even with one hand in my pocket and then, you know, kind of poking around, I was trying to figure out where the heck this buzzing is coming from. And at first I started unsoldering and moving grounds around because I'm like, well, maybe it's a ground loop. So I put the ground um, a little bit different, more like how I did over here, which actually, funny enough, my grounding on this was not... Uh, sort of optimal based on today's standards. So I did a lot more research based on what I've heard and the, and the buzzing here and I did some research and I looked at the Japanese schematic uh, because the the tech at the time did reference where the grounds were. So, and it's not how I did it here, which is fine because at the end of the day, this was still a super solid and really low noise floor amp. This, however, was starting to get some buzz, and it was starting to really buzz me off. Ha! Really bad joke. Um, so, okay, jump right straight to it. It turns out that the heater wire, if you remember in my first video, I changed the way I did heater wiring, um, and it would have been an issue here too, but the problem, basically what I sourced the issue down to was, see the signal going from uh, V2, or V1B to the one meg pot, well, that was laying directly on top of a heater wire down below. Let's see. See, so see, I originally had this wire in, you know, tucked under the board, and it was laying right on top of that heater wire over there and connecting to that pin. I started moving this wire away from the heater wire, and lo and behold, the noise floor dropped and the buzzing was gone. So um, instead of unsoldering, which is a real big pain, this whole circuit board, I just rerouted this wire up and through to the one meg pot. Why did I not have that problem over here when I did the heater wiring on the inside? Similar as well. You can see it. The difference is I was a dummy and I didn't realize, but it actually worked out that the um, wire going to and from the one mag pot does not need to touch this board at all. It just can go directly to the pin um, because it just comes basically from the one mag pot up here. Oop, where is it? Up here and then down. So what that actually does in this case is that keeps that wire away from the heater wire, which again uh, was the source of the buzz. If I laid this down the same way that I started to over here, or actually originally had it over here, this noise would have buzzed just like the other one. This is known to be a super sensitive area. A lot of folks use coax. So I think what I'm going to do next time is two things. I'm going to change my heater wiring to sort of mimic the style that I've done a lot more research on, where you see this black wire comes here. The white wire is actually, I'm going to go over the top and utilize 3D space. So I want to talk about 3D space for a minute. The 3D space is really important now since I've learned and, uh, I, you know, it's widely n known somewhat that, you know, wires close to other wires, especially unshielded, could cause problems. So utilizing 3D space, such as like this wire, like Dumble used, um, and then these wires will actually lower your noise floor or at least reduce the chance of having interference from the signals that are traveling on this wire going into other parts of the circuit that should not, it should not have that signal. Especially these are unshielded. Yeah, you could twist them, 
sort of like what you do here for hum cancellation. That really only works in AC lines. This is an AC line, obviously, because of it's a speaker. Um, but what I had to do, again, this is a scrap chassis, if you will. Uh, it was not intended. It's not perfect. See these switches? They're, they're off-center, but that's okay um, because it was what I needed to do to prototype this amp. Um, instead of running these wires the same way that I did over here, which is super clean, right? You don't see that at all. I had enough room to put that, those wires and have them confidently away from anywhere that was sensitive to a circuit. I did not have that luxury with this, and also I wanted to utilize the 3D space. And it, although it doesn't look as pretty, this is way more functional than trying to tuck it under and over. And actually, honestly, if it wasn't, I don't know. I think it's sort of like a a conflict, right? Do you want this amp to look pretty on Instagram? Or do you want it to be functionally lowest noise floor and, you know, isolation? Utilize that 3D space for all your wires so they're not cross-talking, interfering with each other. So I think there is some areas that you can, uh, you should be okay with getting away with sort of the balance. And that, and this is one of them, so I recommend that, if you will. Sometimes you'll see also the wire going into and out of the uh, the coax into and out of the FX loop going over the top of the boards. So if you look at some of the boutique builders of today, you may notice that there is a coax that jumps over the top, goes all the way over to the master uh, or the level in this case. So, so sort of some things that you'll notice now that I've mentioned it. It's kind of like when your friend gets a car and you haven't really seen that car or th think you haven't seen that car, and then all of a sudden you're driving down the road the next day, and then that's all you can see is that particular car. Well, it's sort of the same effect that you're going to have uh, after watching my videos. Another difference is the FET. All right, so this FET is not honest number two, and that is actually okay because this is the improved, this is the later version of Dumble's uh, FET. It uses a 150K uh, dropping resistor versus the 220. And the this this FET worked. I had to work it a lot to make it work. And you see the, the 220 over here. Um, and I had to change the bias up. And I actually, I'm getting lower voltage than what I should, which means that the headroom on this FET is a lot lower than it should, making this inferior compared to this one. Uh, one concern I had was, though... Um, is that the voltage, because this is a shared volt, uh, basically th this wire coming in uh, to feed this FET is shared with V1. So uh, I don't know if how familiar you are with the tube amps, but basically if you drag down one part of that, because it's shared, it shares a uh, filter cap pair, it will actually drag. So if you put a different tube in here, like a 12 AU7, it's going to drag the voltage down to you know a lot lower than what this is, which means that anything's connected to that uh, tube, that V1 or, or wherever it is, is going to lower the voltage out elsewhere. So that means that this voltage will be lowered, uh, and, and vice versa. If we start dropping the voltage here, making a higher load, so it's loading down the voltage, it's going to affect V1. So that was one of my main concerns with messing and changing from 220 to 150 to get us 18 volts up top. Um, it turns out that there's a not enough current draw. So that's the other part of this equation, is current draw. So yes, we can have different voltages, and this is dropping some voltage, uh, more voltage than the other one, actually less voltage, so you would think that the amperage draw would be higher. But in this case, it's not. It's still very low, and it didn't drop a single volt on V1. So I'm pretty confident that even though this is a little bit different style, the resistor is 150K versus 220, which you know in theory should have been impacting V1 lo less, there is no concerns as far as I'm concerned with any by you know byproduct that will affect tone 
a V1 because everywhere, if you go online, V1 is very important for the tone setup. And not only V1, but the voltage of V1 compared to the rest of the amp. Blah, blah, blah. I'm rambling. Um, one thing to note with the Hammond class, uh, transformers is that they do not have a center tap for uh, your heater wire. So you do have to put an artificial center tap just like the uh, traditional fenders of the day. So with these 100 ohm resistors is now a requirement if you do not use a classic tone uh, transformer which has this green and yellow wire which is a center tap. One sort of consideration with having these center taps is that it's going uh, with these resistors it is going to load down the power supply a little bit at least the heater section um, by 34 milliamps give or take so that as far as the overall equation um, it is going to put a little bit more of a stress on the heater windings uh, to drive seven preamp outputs and your four uh, tubes. So I think we're right on the edge of what this power supply is is performing or can perform. 18 gauge wire here all the way through. Um, I sort of alluded to this earlier, but everything is, uh, you know, metal uh, carbon film where carbon film was on the original metal film where there's metal film on the original to give me an indication of the tone uh, difference. And I've sort of come up with my own way to make this fixed bias amp variable bias, variable bias um, by having this wire wound uh, pot. It's a two watt wire wound pot wired in parallel. No, yeah, parallel to the 10k dropper here. So it gives you about six because it's in parallel. It's 20k. Um, and then that way I can make this whole amp adjustable without having to worry about putting too much stress on this pot if I ran the wire just to this, and that would heat up and possibly fail. In the event that this pot fails, that 10, because we're in parallel, that 10 um, ohm uh, or 10K resistor will handle the load, assuming that this is going to go open. If this closes and clamps down um that will not be good either but i think that we're safer going this route and distributing the load across two resistors versus one um i'm trying to think if there's anything else to note here not really i'll get into a tone demo um soon my buddy josh is going to come over and we're going to switch using this we're going to take the boss tube amp expander record everything directly so speaker outputs from both amps going into here, the output of that device going into here, and we're going to do a record and a IR. So I'm able to change what impulse response. I'm going to do the typical G1265 directly from Celestian, their impulse response library. Um, and then we can give it a proper listen in sort of a very, very sterile environment um, not, you know, taking in consideration the noise from the bar or the noise from the studio or anything like that. So I hope you found this video informative. It's going on 18 plus minutes and a lot of rambling. Hopefully you got something out of it. Let me know what you want to see out of this amp next. Um, but basically a lot of news to come as far as how to purchase these circuit boards. I have 20 plus of these chassis being made and delivered this Friday or this week. So um, those will be available soon. So a lot of things to come. Please stay tuned um, very, very shortly, like in the next coming days. I'll make a blog entry in my uh, thetonegeek.com, giving you all the details. So enjoy.